Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Dr. Sid Cowley and I'm working in the intersection of Fusion and AI at the FIA member DigiLab. Today is Wednesday the 4th of September and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. Inside China's race to lead the world in nuclear fusion. 2. Step forward to fusion. 3. DOE awards $4.6 million for fusion research. 4. The UK nuclear fusion startup helping the US develop stealth submarines. And of course, I'll have some bonuses at the end. 1. Inside China's race to lead the world in nuclear fusion. Our first story today comes from Nature and covers China's ramping attempts to be the leader of the global fusion industry and what other countries can do to stay competitive. Now, for context, China has been involved in fusion for a while, but mostly through modest contributions to the ITER program. These contributions have been made through their own experimental tokamak, EAST, which has been operating since 2006 and specializes in long pulse operation and research into metal walls. Over the past few years, however, China has been massively ramping up its efforts in fusion and have been backing these efforts with resources. China is estimated to be spending over $1.5 billion in fusion research, which, according to Jean-Paul Lelaine, Associate Director of the US Department of Energy's Office of Fusion Energy Sciences, is nearly double what the US government spends per year. But on top of standalone government research, the Chinese government is also working with more Chinese industries, with organizations such as the ENN Group now involved in fusion research. Because of this growing effort and backing, China has been able to massively grow their fusion capabilities and ambitions. On their roadmap is the completion of the China Engineering Fusion Test Reactor, or CFETR. This device will supposedly bridge the gap between an experimental device of today and the power plants of tomorrow. It has already released an engineering design report and is set to be complete in the 2030s, outpacing similar devices such as ITER. In addition to CFETR, there are several near-term ambitious projects for fusion in China. In 2020, for example, the HL3 tokamak begun operation in Chengdu, and China is also set to complete the comprehensive research facility for fusion technology next year. This facility is where researchers will develop and manufacture materials, components, and prototypes for fusion power plants. They are also set to complete the Burning Plasma Experimental Tokamak in 2027, which will study a burning deuterium-tritium plasma. According to Dennis White, nuclear scientist at the MIT Plasma Science and Fusion Center, China has built itself up from being a non-player 25 years ago to having world-class capabilities. Now, I think this is a really fascinating look into China's diverse and growing efforts in fusion. But more than that, I think this article reminds countries what competitive really means in fusion. Fusion is no small project, and to achieve fusion energy on a rapid timescale, Europe, the US, and the UK have to go big or go home. Two, step forward to fusion. Our second story comes from the Royal Society in the UK and covers the really exciting publication of a special journal proceedings on the STEP project. Now, those avid watchers of Fusion News are probably already aware of STEP, the Spherical Tokamak for Energy Production, which is a UK program to build a magnetic fusion demonstration power plant by the 2040s, and represents the most ambitious singular effort by a government to build a fusion power plant. Already, 1,600 people have been working on STEP, investing over 2 million hours of work and involving the collaboration of over 500 different companies. But for those who are following STEP news, you'll know that we haven't actually heard that much about the technical design itself. News has mostly been covering organizational developments, such as the location of STEP and any funding announcements. So that makes it really exciting that the Royal Society has put out a special issue containing more than a dozen articles detailing the fantastic work that has gone into the design and scientific basis of STEP. The overview of this past five years of research contains everything from power plant cost analysis to material selection of plasma facing components to incorporating advanced digital technologies to accelerate design. I really recommend you check this one out. Three, USDOE awards 4.6 million for fusion research. The next story comes from Nuclear Engineering International and covers the announcement of the US Department of Energy's Infuse Awards. 
If you haven't already heard of it, Infuse is a program from the US government to accelerate private sector fusion development and offers funding and resources from government facilities and labs. This year's recipients of the Infuse Awards have just been announced and include familiar fusion developers such as FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, but it also includes some newer, smaller companies such as FIA member Blue Laser Fusion and Marathon Fusion. The 17 projects range in scope from plasma simulations to materials testing to tritium handling, and in total, 4.6 million US dollars has been allocated. If you want to know the latest in smaller scale public private fusion research, I'd recommend you check those projects out. Four, the UK nuclear fusion startup helping the US develop stealth submarines. Our final story today comes from the Financial Times. It covers a recent contract between the FIA member Tokamak Energy and a US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to create silent propulsion systems for submarines. Now, if you're asking yourself why a UK-based fusion company is working on boat propulsion, the answer lies in one of Tokamak Energy's key enabling technologies, HTS. Now, high temperature superconductors, or HTS magnets, allow for much higher magnetic fields than conventional magnet technology. Tokamak Energy was founded in order to leverage those magnetic fields to create smaller, cheaper, more compact fusion devices. Since they were founded, Tokamak Energy has been growing into a leading developer of this HTS magnet technology. In 2019, for example, they built the world's highest field HTS magnet at 24 Tesla. And later this year, they're set to complete Demo 4, a configuration of 44 magnetic coils producing a magnetic field of 18 Tesla. And this is all in the real configuration of a tokamak. For context, most tokamaks today operate with around 4 or 5 Tesla. As it turns out, fabricating these large-scale, high-field HTS coils has many applications other than fusion. For the program in question, Tokamak Energy are developing HTS magnets for marine propulsion through something called a magnetohydrodynamic drive. But the applications don't end there, and the Tokamak Energy Magnets Organization expects it could generate more than 8 million pounds in revenue next year and 300 million pounds in revenue per year by the end of the decade. According to Liam Brennan, director of the Tokamak Energy Magnetics Organization, what we want to do here is usher in the HTS era. We want to get those magnets out there and get them operating. Right, well, that's all for our main stories today. But before you leave, of course, we have some bonuses as well. For our first bonus story today, we have a great opinion piece from the Washington Post about how AI could be a game changer for fusion research. Now, personally, I think this story is exciting for several reasons. First, it's written by the head of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, Stephen Cowley, who, as well as being a world-leading expert on fusion, also shares the same last name as me. But secondly, this is a really exciting dive into one fascinating enabling technology for fusion. And it's close to my heart since I currently work at that interface between fusion and AI. For our final bonus story, we have the fact that the New York Climate Week is fast approaching and the FIA has recently released a list of some of the fantastic fusion events that will be taking place as part of those celebrations. So those were the biggest stories in fusion this week. I really hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please feel free as always to continue engaging with us. We really appreciate the support on all levels, so thank you. And as always, if any of those stories interest you in particular, check out their links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.